I probably shouldn't do this video. <clears throat> Wait till I'm in a better mood. Um, I, I published that uh, uh, video on the second coming uh, as a Sunday school lesson that I was asked to do. And the reason I published it, I did a private publishing just for our ward, but I published it um, because there were some ward members who said, hey, you know, I'd really like access to it. And I'm not smart enough to figure it out, how to do it, other than to, to put it out for public. And then I just gave them you know, a link to my YouTube channel so that they could watch it. And so that's why I did that. Um, so interesting, um, the, the comments. And, <clears throat> okay, here's the deal. Someone, uh, one of our great contributors on, on this channel, and I, I can't remember who it was, but made the suggestion that maybe we just focus on the last dispensation versus which seal we're in, whether it's the fifth, sixth, or seventh seal. Um, you know, I like to think that we're in the seventh seal and um, point to, towards some things that, that would indicate that. But I, I find that pointless, and I almost find it divisive and I'm, I'm tired of that. I just don't, I don't want this, you know, debate. So those of us that are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I know I have some uh, viewers that aren't uh, members of our faith, but those that are, we, we have an expression or a determination of time that's called the last dispensation. So we talk about dispensations, we talk about seals. And interestingly enough, they're both seven. The dispensations follow uh, prophets. So um, I'm just shooting from the hip here, but I think we have Adam, we have Noah, or excuse me, we have Adam, we have Enoch, we have Noah, we have Abraham, we have Christ, Oh, I'm missing one. Mo oh, Moses. Okay, start again. We have Adam. We have Enoch or Enoch. We have Noah. We have Abraham. We have Moses. Um, we have Christ and the prophet Joseph. Seventh, seventh dispensation. We're in the last dispensation. This is it before Christ comes. I'm not going to talk about seals anymore. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, even bring up why I think we're in the seventh seal or anything. Um, it, it just, it, it, but I think as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, we have to say that we're in the in the last dispensation. Now, now a seal is, is said to be a thousand years. And, and Joseph Smith spells that out. Peter spells that out. Uh, a thousand years represents a seal. And we typically think that 4,000 years from Adam to Christ, we have 2,000 years since Christ plus. So, you know, the math would indicate such that we're, we're, we're there. But, you know, there's, there's, there's too, too much contention, and I don't like it. So we're just going to focus on the last dispensation. Now think of this. I will say this, um, not concerning seals, but concerning the 144,000. Uh, which is in the sixth seal, um, the restoration, the visit of the father and son to the prophet Joseph 200 years, a little bit more than 200 years ago, uh, began the last dispensation. And that restoration is specific for 
the restoration of Israel and the preparation for the second coming. And there are so many quotes for that. I'm, you know, you, you figure it out. But our current prophet has talked about that many, many, many times, that the purpose of the restoration is to prepare for the second coming and to gather scattered Israel. And, and to see that, ga- that, that scattered Israel is sealed in the temple. Sealed, okay? Um, so why wouldn't the 144,000 come forth right at the beginning of the opening of the last dispensation to help with the work? And everyone's going, well, that just can't happen. That can't, it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. And I have yet to have someone tell me why that couldn't have happened yet. Why not? And I I hear some things here and there and I I go, well, that, that doesn't make sense. You know, God can resurrect people anytime he wants. Moroni was resurrected being. Peter, James, and John were resurrected being. All lived after Christ, after his resurrection. The resurrected beings. If, if we want to say they're quickened, if we want to say, you know, whatever, you know, like the, the, the three disciples in the Book of Mormon that chose, that really wanted to stay and see this thing through, and they were quickened. They were caught up into heaven. Then they were brought back down. People probably didn't even know that that had happened to them, um, unless they're very in tune. We don't know if 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 God has done that with others. Um, of course, John the Revelator, we know. So so we we know at least four people have been quickened, and are living on Earth in a, a what what I would say is a is a, a, a terrestrial body, um, not a resurrected body yet. Um, but if you want to say the 144 resurrected, that's fine. That's fine Fine with me. You don't think that there hasn't been uh, 12,000 from each tribe that are worthy and righteous? Now, I know some people feel like the, 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 the 144,000 is a, is a title, um, but, but let's just take it literal. Uh, for the sake of arguing, and and just say there's there's 144,000 individuals from from the time of Jacob until the opening of the sixth seal. Okay. Oh well, how could they be high priests? How could they be this? How could they be that? Well, you know. Gosh, they weren't baptized and ordained, perhaps. And maybe the church wasn't even here. How could they be part of the 144,000? I don't know. How could Joseph Smith be a prophet of God and not be baptized yet or receive the priesthood? Think of that. He was visited by God the Father, his son Jesus Christ, and he hadn't even been baptized yet. Oh, think of that. Okay, you can tell I'm frustrated, right? There's so many things. We could talk about Revelation 12, the first couple of verses there. Uh, it's, it's pretty spectacular to think in September, I think it was, 2017, sign in heaven. We had Virgo and all the things going on and she gives birth and it fits it. It's kind of cool. Well, if you don't want to believe that, fine. I don't care. If you don't want to believe you know, missionaries being called home, to their home countries and and missionary work really being uh, changed okay that's fine uh temples closing throughout the world no big deal no big deal nothing to do with anything don't look here nothing going on here um you know you can either you can either want to look for things. Okay, let's 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 go to let's go to um, Doctrine and Covenants um, eighty eight. Okay, let's go to Doctrine and Covenants eighty eight. This was quoted, I think, by Elder Anderson. No, yeah, I think it was Elder Anderson. 
Um, and there was silence in the heaven for a space of half an hour. And immediately after, this is section 88, verse 95. And immediately after shall the curtain of the heaven be unfolded as a scroll is unfolded. And you can go to, you can go to Doctrine and Covenants section 45, verse 45. You can go to section D&C section 76, verse 63. Uh, you can go to 1 Thessalonians 4. I think it's 15 through 18, and it describes really similar stuff here. Okay? Um, the heavens unfold as a scroll is unfolded after it is rolled up. And the face of the Lord shall be unveiled. Okay? And the saints that are upon the earth who are alive shall be quickened and caught up to meet him. That is the rapture. That is, and, and somebody asked, well, where does the word rapture come from? I don't know. It's probably some Latin thing that means, you know, brought together, snatched. I think that's what it means, snatched. And, and uh, so, so, okay, we don't believe in the rapture. We believe in being caught up. Who cares? Okay. Um, caught up to meet him. And they who have slept in their graves shall come forth for their graves shall be opened and they also shall be caught up to meet him in the midst of the pillar of heaven. So you have dead people going up, you have live people going up. They are Christ, the first fruits who shall descend with him first. They come back down. This is cool, with Christ. They're part of the army. This is really cool. And they are Christ, the first fruits, who shall descend with him first. And they who are on the earth and in their graves, who are the first, caught up to meet him. And all this is by the voice of the sounding of the trump of the angel of God. And then, listen to this. And after this, another angel, another angel shall sound, which is the second trump, then cometh the redemption of those who are Christ at his coming, who have received their part in that prison which is prepared for them. So that's when the other resurrection comes. So this is, this is cool. This is, this is what's described. This is what some of our Christian brothers and sisters consider the rapture. Now, we, we think of it probably differently. We don't just disappear and our clothes are left here and we're gone. We go, we get taught. We can't really reveal what we've been taught, just like the, the three disciples in the Book of Mormon. And then we come back down and there's a change. Our bodies have been quickened. And we can, we can do things that, we, that don't harm our body. We don't feel sorrow except for the, the sins of, of men. And we can go about and do some pretty awesome things. That's cool. That's the rapture that... A member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, myself, believes in, okay? So we could talk about that. But you know what? I don't know what seal it's in, but I do know it's in the last dispensation. And I know that we are in the last dispensation. And I also know, because we heard it from the prophet, that we're at the end of the last dispensation. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. We're at the end of the last dispensation. We're not talking about a long, lengthy time and oh, all this stuff has to happen. The other thing that I get a little fired up about is, you know, putting these limits on God. You know, God can only work through someone who's gone through the temple, been baptized first, and gone through the temple, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, go, I always go back to Joseph Smith. Did God work through a guy that had, had received his endowment, that had been baptized? No. A 14-year-old boy who had neither. 
Oh, well, that's different because it's a new dispensation. Oh, okay. Okay, so God can only do that if there's a new dispensation. Otherwise, he can't do that. He can't work through Jews. No, can't work through any Jews. They can't build their own temple. There's no way. Now, look, I don't want to get critical here, uh, but I, I do want to like expand our minds a little bit as, as, to, as to what has happened in the past, how God has worked through all kinds of people throughout the world to bring about his work, which is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man, right? Um, yeah, he can do it. And Moses got drunk once. Ooh, you know. Or excuse me, Noah. <laughs> Maybe Moses did too, I don't know. But Noah did. Moses did. I don't know. Somebody got drunk. Um, let's not get hung up on these things. Um, we have section 45. We have doctrine in, in the Doctrine and Covenants. We have section 88, section 133. Um, we have Moses 7. We have um, um, Matthew 24, Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins. We have signs in the heaven. We have, we have e <clears throat> eclipses that, that cross the country that, that, that make, basically make an X over, over Adam on Diamond, one in, was it 2017 or 2018? I can't remember now. And, and then one that's going to be coming in a few years that cr crisscrosses the, the, the total opposite direction. We have, uh, we have all these signs in the heavens. We have feasts, uh, Jewish feasts that fall on these, on these eclipses. We, we have um, um, all these things that we can look forward to and, 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 and these signs that we can focus on. Or we can say... Till I hear it from the prophet, I'm not going to believe a thing. It's not going to happen in my lifetime or my kid's lifetime or my grandkids. There's too much that has to happen. That's fine. That's fine. The other thing that just bothers me is, is this idea that we um, shouldn't be studying this. Uh, you know, if the prophet doesn't talk about it, think of this. Think of this. Nephi he wanted to tell us everything that he saw. And what did God tell him? No, you can't. I'm reserving that for my servant, John. Okay? I'm letting him do it. Okay? Well, I think, I can't remember right now, but it was either Mormon or Moroni. I get that confused there a little bit towards the end. But one of them wanted to do the same thing. Uh-uh. That's for my servant, John, to do. Well, one, just, just, you know, possibility. <clears throat> Maybe our prophet is saying, <clears throat> study the scriptures. It's in there. It's there. That's where you need to be. That's where you need to be looking. Look to the heavens. Look at the signs. It says right in Genesis, the, 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 the stars, the heavens, the, the beings up there, they're, they're, they're created for signs. Okay. So um, maybe, just maybe, our prophet is under the same constraint that Nephi was, that Moroni or Mormon was, that this was reserved for John to do. And think of this, John, the book of Revelation, it's in the Bible, accessible to anybody who wants to read it and study it and ponder it and fill of the Spirit. So, there's other people that can get insights is what I'm trying to say because the Bible, the most distributed book in the world, okay? So, um, we could talk about so many things. Um, you know, I'm just kind of rambling right now. But, 
I do feel that we have to stop this divisiveness and and get to the point where we are in agreement on some things. So from now on, that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on the last dispensation, and I'm going to focus focus on specific things. However, as soon as somebody says that the Jews can't do anything without the Mormons coming to the rescue, um, I, I will I will cite prophets who said different. Okay. So, so I'm not going to be passive on this, but I am just going to, from now on, focus. But I'm going to focus more and more and more on events of the second coming. Um, because that's, that's where we're at. I'm going to talk about the ten tribes. I'm going to talk about what it specifically says. And the 144,000. Um, I, I need to speak more on that. Um, in fact, let's talk about the 144,000. Now, I've, I've mentioned that I felt like the 144,000, the candidates for the 144,000 could possibly be, and I don't know, but they could be children who, are, who die before the age of accountability or who have a mental capacity where they're not held accountable for anything they do. Because that is the most pure human being. We could even talk about aborted individuals. Now, I don't think there were a lot of abortions at the beginning of this, of, I'm not going to say this still, the beginning of this last dispensation. But I, you know, I really don't know that. But, but if, we go, if we go to the first mention of the 144,000, I think it's in, um, oh, where is it here? Um, do, 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 do. It's, it's in the sixth seal, the opening of the sixth seal. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, it's in chapter 7. It's in chapter 7. Um, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And then it goes through each tribe, saying twelve thousand from this tribe, blah, 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 blah. Clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in the white robes? Whence, they, whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Not maybe the great tribulation, but great tribulation. Small g, lowercase g and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, some people will say, well, that couldn't be a child because a child doesn't need to repent, and so therefore they don't need to wash, their robes don't need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Well, yes, they do. Without Christ, we all have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Everybody. He takes, he, he takes them. They're his, right? But they do have to be washed. Uh, they don't have to do the traditional repentance like, like the rest of us do, but he still has to wash them. Therefore, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Okay? Okay. Uh, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst no more. Kind of sounds like the Nephites or the three disciples. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. 
For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, which is a really good cross-reference to uh, Isaiah 25, 18. <clears throat> but this is specific to them. Now, we can also go to um, chapter 14 of Revelation, which we get another uh, uh, clue to the 144,000. And I looked, and lo, the Lamb stood on the mount on on the Mount Zion or Mount Zion. Um, and a lot of people say that's in Jerusalem. Now, you know, members of the of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints will say Mount Zion or Mount Zion is is the New Jerusalem. Well, here we go. I don't know. And with him, a hundred and forty four thousand having his Father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of the great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping and their harp, with their harps. I love that. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. That is key to me. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they, were, they are virgins. Now, I've heard all kinds of things here. Well, you know, you're not a virgin if you can be married, but you keep your, your covenants, uh, so you're, you're a virgin. Uh, no, virgin's a virgin. These are they which follow the lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault, before the throne of God. Now, <clears throat> um, you know, we can talk about that. We can, uh, you know, I don't mind hearing your suggestions, but um, <laughs> you, you have to take it for what it says. And those are some pretty good descriptions of the 144,000, which is one just one element of, of the events of the second coming, the 144,000. We're going to talk about the city of Enoch coming down and the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. You know, I hear, oh, until I hear that we're building a temple at, at uh, Jackson County, I'm not really going to worry about it. Really? Well, what if it just comes down from heaven and it's there? And you're, you're a Johnny come lately. These are things that we should be studying, looking for. Listen to the talk by Elder Oaks. I think it was in 2005 on the second coming. Um, it's powerful. And he says we should be searching and looking for these signs. We really should. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done um, with that. But we're in the last dispensation. And we're at the end of the last dispensation. And no debate here on which seal has been uh, opened or which seal we're in um, because we, we haven't been told. Now, you can go to the church website and there's information there. Um, that says that we're in the seventh seal and it was on or about the year 2000. And those that don't believe we're in that, they kind of discard that and say, well, that's from an institute manual, that's from this, and da da da. And, and you know, I, I know, and I get it, it's on the church website. But if you're going to do that and say, eh, that doesn't really count, then don't be quoting me. Um, the Mortal Messiah by Bruce R. McConkie. This is his opinion. 
Okay. Um, in other words, don't pick and choose. Don't say, well, that doesn't count, but this does. You know, I'm not disagreeing with Bruce R. McConkie. I'd be an idiot to do that. However, there, there were things in Mormon doctrine. There were things that, that were Bruce R. McConkie's opinion. And he openly admitted he was wrong on some of those things before he even passed away. They were his opinion. I'm grateful that he was willing to put it out there. And, and his, 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 his books on Christ are amazing. So, um, but, but my point is, is you, 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 it's interesting how we pick and choose which, you know, which ones we're going to use. So last dispensation, can we all agree on that and that we're at the end of the last dispensation? Can we agree on that? And that Joseph Smith is the prophet of the last dispensation. Can we agree on that? Awesome. Okay, I'm out. Have a good night and a good day. And we will hopefully have another broadcast soon coming up. Talk to you soon. Bye.